You know who else does it right? Those fucking the, the people who speak in tongues. They just oh, come on. They, they're like the snake charmers. You know what the that's char- like? The charismatics. Well, the people that speak in tongues, where they just go off and shama la 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 la. You know what that, that is like? That's like a verbal mosh pit. That's what it's like. They just blah, 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 and everybody's like, Jesus speaks through him. Jesus speaks through him. There's something about that too. There's something like super entertaining about that old Sam Kennison style d- revival church type preacher. Like but, that's a fucking entertaining thing to watch. But it's also kind of harkens back to like the Greek uh, um, bacchanals where everyone's just drunk and just oh, having yeah. orgies and just yeah. losing their minds. But it's it's the same kind of thing. It's like you believe Jimmy Swaggart because he's led you into his little realm of control and he's he's your cult leader. You know, if you believe that guy, if your auntie's like, I've sinned. Remember, remember when he got caught with like hookers and was it like hookers and blow? Well, is that what it was? Is, is he the one Something who's back happened. selling rice and cheesy broccoli? No, that's the other guy. That's Jim, Jim Baker. Baker. Okay. Jim Baker is selling uh, apocalypse food. <laughs> it's, it's cheesy broccoli. <laughs> But he had apocalypse food that was like under the table and you would use it as a table instead of they were showing how you could store it around the house and instead of like having table legs you could have all this boxed food under your table like it's one of the wildest things you've ever seen in your life. But it's also really funny that like if you guys are in his organization shouldn't you be the ones getting raptured like shouldn't you be like the hundred oh god (laughs) there he is eating it bulk sampler bundle imagine this is the guy that was this now this has the sam kinnison connection too because uh he was uh he had the affair with jessica hahn right who was the secretary the hot secretary and jessica hahn wound up fucking sam kinnison and they had i forgot about that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. they had a terrible breakup they would talk shit about each other on howard stern (laughs) What do you think of what Howard's become recently? Well, he's I the mean, only person I know who's gone, other than Penn maybe, who's gone from being red pilled to blue pilled. Yeah. For people who don't know, let me do a little, because the kids these days don't know. Yeah. Howard Stern had a guy in his show, Stuttering John, and he would send them out to talk to celebrities, and he would ask them the most fucked up questions and this wasn't before this was before social media oh, so yeah. they had a usually used to have a, a barrier you can't just tweet at someone so when jennifer flowers in 92 was announcing that she had an affair with bill clinton people thought i was going to sink his candidacy he sent his boy there and he asked her did he use a condom and then he asked her are you planning on sleeping with any other presidential candidates and <laughs> the, the reporters there were ape shit and they're trying to kick him out but like he would do th- he when he had and it's really kind of funny when he had these comedians who had like a stick up their ass like i remember he talked to Billy Crystal and Bill Crystal like, oh, let me have it. And he's like, all right, um, are you going to be making a sequel to Mr. Saturday Night, like his big bomb? And the look on Billy Crystal's face, just the pure rage, was absolutely hilarious. God, that's hilarious. Yeah, he did some wild shit. And then um, I guess he had a falling out with Howard, and then he went over to uh, Jay Leno. And, yeah, he now was he the just... announcer of the Jay Leno yeah. show. So that was a great gig for him. No, but what? But I he mean, was like very underrated. Like he just was willing to. But there was like that. Call, what, it, what he had created was a morning show that you had to listen to. Like yes. you would go to work and you go, "Oh my God, did you hear Howard?" Right. You would, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you hear? And he he did it every day. And it's a it was a super valuable thing because it didn't exist anywhere else. We if we're around today, we have. All these like social media memes that are hilarious and fucked up. We have like Reddit threads that are hilarious. The, you, there's a lot of stuff out there where people are being outrageous. But back then there was right. It was just so Howard. you had a boring ass fucking job where you're like sitting in a truck all day delivering packages or whatever it is. And in that morning when you get to work, you're listening to Howard fucking Stern, and he's got some lady who's riding on a vibrator, and she's like, remember you the, with that yeah, thing the, the that Sibian. They, the Sibian, Sibian, yeah. Sibian. Yeah. Different gals ride on this. No, thing. he ha- it was even worse if people want to promote like their band The mom would be controlling it or the son would be controlling it The mom would be sitting on it or oh, like brother Christ. and sister and you're sitting Jesus there. You just want to kill Christ. yourself Jesus Christ. He just went so f- he just went for it and He got fined by the FCC It was for, a big for deal. saying like lusty lesbians and lust or something like that It was just I don't nothing. It, was, it was during the Bush era yeah. and this was back when the right was trying to censor people right. and this is our pivot and our shift again You know, it's really kind of fascinating. It really is Real, it real, the, like the culture shift between right and left authoritarianism, and now people don't recognize that the if you just stopped looking at it in terms of red and blue, look at the actions 
whether it's war, suppression of free speech, uh, pharmacological interventions that are mandatory, right. whatever, whatever, whatever the fuck it is, that used to all be associated with the authoritative right, the authoritarian right. And now those things are being embraced by the left. And I just think it's a, I think it's just an ideology thing. And I think we get confused and we think we're on the right side. We're on the right side. And if it's our side that's saying this, for sure, that's the right thing to do. And no one's critically thinking about this. 